I forgot how rich Aikon is. Yeah, 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 man. Nuts. Which one, which one, which one of those uh, collaborations do you like? You sort of somewhere in the deep recesses of your mind hold the dearest. Like, damn, I can't believe I did that. Oh, Michael Jackson Hammond. for sure. I got Michael Jackson. Barris Hammond. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Oh, please, I'm yeah. I want to hear sorry, the Michael Jackson. Wait, so, so, so no, Michael's the, the one you hold sure. closest. Yeah, because I was at the top of my list. When like when I first got out of jail, I had made a 10-year a list of all the things I wanted to accomplish, no matter how crazy it might have sound. And at the top of my list was to work with Michael Jackson. And how did it end up happening? That happened in five years. Five years. And how did it happen? Oh, um, there, actually, we, we had the same attorney. And I didn't know that my attorney represented him. And one day he just called me. He's like, listen, man, you know. Mike wants to get a, get on a con, you know conversation with you. I said, "What do you mean? Which Mike Tyson?" He's like, "No, <laughs> Michael Jackson." I said, "No, nah, get the fuck oh, get, get out of here." He's like, "No, seriously, I want to put you guys on a phone call in the next five minutes. So have your phone ready." Okay, boom. So Take I got us my through phone it. like this, just waiting. Right. So next, you no, know, he calls me. You know, he's like, uh, "Kind of have Mike on the line with you." You know, Mike calls, "Hello," and as soon as I heard, I hung up. I just literally hung up the phone. No. Hey. Nah, I was like, man, this nigga playing. He's like, why are you playing on my phone? Right? <laughs> so he calls me back. I said, yo, bro, just put Mike on the phone. Like, stop playing. He said, no, that was Mike. I said, but he didn't sound like Mike. I said, no, that's Mike. Why? He was like, yo, what's up, nigga? <laughs> it's Mike. <laughs> that's what Ebro says he says. I've heard him. I heard it. I heard it. I heard him. I heard Michael Jackson use that word. His voice for is sure. a lot deeper in person, you know? But then when he when I got on the phone, it just it sounded deeper than I expected it to sound, you know. So I just didn't think it was Mike. So what did he say? He was like, "Why'd you hang up on me?" <laughs> nah, he he actually was laughing the whole time. Like he laughing at me. He thought the shit was funny, um, and I was like, you know, so what's up, Mike? He said, "You listen, I'm in Vegas. I'm working on this project, and I want you to come be a part of it, executive produce and everything." And I was like, "Man, I would love to." The next day, he put me on a plane. I got there, and when I got there, it was crazy because this one I realized that everything about Mike, his whole life is choreographed, right? Everything is planned out. I get up, the dude named Muhammad takes me upstairs. Muhammad takes me up, and it's, it's like these double doors in the suite. It was at the wind. The doors seemed like they opened on their own. Like, nobody opened the door. Like, as we was walking in, the doors just start and opening the up. Yeah, yeah, the shit, he, just, he just start opening up. And Mike is faced to me with the chair in his back like this. Walking in, the mic and the chase. As soon as he feels the door open, he just slowly turns. <laughs> putting on the show. <laughs> yeah. Putting on the show. Slowly turns like in slow motion. I'm like, is this nigga really? Is this really Mike? Like it's one of them things. Like right. So he just looks, and I look. I was like, oh, what up, Mike? And he got on the chair like, hey, what up, God? And we hugged. It was crazy. Like as if we known each other for years. And then, and then, how much work did you actually do together on the on the album? Oh, we did a, actually we did we did mad ideas. Mike was the kind of person he'd like to just do all the ideas and he'd come back to see which ones actually stick or stuck out. So we did mad ideas, but the one that stuck out was a record that actually that I had for my album that I wanted to feature on wanted to feature from him on called Hold My Hand. And when he heard it, he just fell in love with it. it was like, no, I just want that record. Can I keep it for myself? I said, yeah, take it. And that's how that album that song came on that album. So tough question. How have you dealt with the uh, the stuff that's been going on with Michael's, you know, image over the last year, the documentary, et cetera? That that's kind of hard to swallow because me knowing him and knowing a lot of the backstories of it, like it's 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 crazy how cruel corporations can be. You know, my, you gotta understand, Mike was one of the most powerful men in the music business, and then he owned fifty percent of Sony, ATV, and which, the Beatles catalog, which is. Beatles just one of many catalogs that he owns fifty percent of, and I always felt like it was one of them things where he just trying to, you know, push him out, and he just wouldn't sell, just he wouldn't took, give up. I, I believe this. Mm -hmm. I believe they took advantage of a Michael Jackson flaw, which was how close he was to too many children. But it wasn't even a flaw. It was. It was like that was that was all humanitarian and just him just having a love for kids. Period. Because he always. Well, believed... but the reason I call it a flaw is because it could be taken advantage of, and you could be made to look like you're a creep. When yeah, you really one no one hundred percent. That's you that's really want to be helpful. A hundred. And then you factor 100%. in people wanting to take advantage. Like on this yeah. show, we've we've debated whether we believe the documentary or not. Yeah. But what we can all agree is the shit we know to be a fact. Which is just walking around with random white kids holding their hand and being nice <laughs> yeah. to them and shit. Mm -hmm. It was it was weird, right? It was it wasn't. If we saw a regular person doing that, we would all be like, "Time out." Yeah, you got too many kids hanging out at the crib where their parents at, 
No, nah, but you, you got to understand, Mike had a theme park in his backyard. I understand. That's for children. Yes. But it was more so for himself because he never had a childhood himself. Like, a lot of people forget Mike grew up, like, constantly being pressured to be a superstar. He never had a childhood of his own. So I mean, it's... It- we, that, we all agree that you know what he I'm was abused as a child. I don't know if it was abusive, but it was it, it, it was like it was preparation for who he was supposed to become. Right. So but the problem is he just never had that time or chance to become or be a child. Well, he, and he also didn't get to choose this. He didn't get he didn't have a choice. This was right, this was right. the life that was set that. out for him. I agree with you. You know what I'm saying? So when he got older, he had a certain sympathy for children, period, because of that. I agree with all right? of that. And then he himself wanted to experience what that was. So he would always do fun things. He loves candy. He loved things that kids love because he never got a chance and to experience And that's something it. that people can take advantage of. No, 100%. And I Absolutely. just want to say while you're sitting here, because I know comments, et cetera, people will try to, anyone who comes, anyone who, in your position mm-hmm. who knew him and says, I have a tough time believing that, et cetera, et cetera, I don't believe it, people will come for you. I think it's very understandable that someone who was close to the man and actually spent time with him mm-hmm. is not able to accept yeah, facts. stories and accusations at face value. No, Nor but, should someone who knows someone. But I'm someone. a realist. If Mike was a creep or he was a pedophile or something like that, I'm not going to sit here and defend him. I'm going to tell you straight up, yo, bro, that dude right there, I can't rock with him. It's no different from R. Kelly. I knew R. Kelly, but when I found out that's what it was, I would tell him to his face, bro, you fucked up for that shit. If it's real, if it's true, but it's just too many people that genuinely you can see that he affected. On Mike's behalf, these are people that was paid off, one or two people, and then parents come back later, recount. Like, you can't even prove none of that stuff. And half that stuff, you can prove that they was paid off to even say those things. 